So now we're going to say a very, very good morning to our special guest in studio today and uh, Mrs. Kanti Ayer. She's a renowned author of two books. Uh, Mrs. Ayer was born in Newcastle, matriculated at St. Oswald Secondary School in 1966. My goodness, that was when I was born. Oops, <laughs> I'm giving away my age. <laughs> she qualified as a senior teacher with a national diploma in domestic science in 1969. Good morning, uh, Vijayaka. How are you? I am so delighted this morning to have uh, with us uh, the renowned author of two amazing recipe books, um, I have to be honest, this mm -hmm. is the start of my love for cooking. Mm -hmm. I think I was about seven years old when the first volume was uh, published. Wow. And I cannot begin to describe how this book has started the love for cooking for so many people. Mm -hmm. It's a simple book. Um, it teaches you step by step. And it was the birth of the love for cooking for so many of us, myself included. Wonderful. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about Mrs. Kanti Ayer, where she's uh, and her qualifications and what she's done in her life? <laughs> so, um, Auntie Kanti, as I affectionately call her, was born in Newcastle. And uh, you, as your listeners know, I'm from Newcastle, mm -hmm. too. It's a little town um, in northern KwaZulu-Natal. Um, Mrs. Ayer was a well-known home economics teacher, and I'm sure if her students are listening, they all will have the sense of affection and love uh, for her and the skills that she taught them, which was sewing, dressmaking, as well as cooking. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Ayer joined the Newcastle Women's Circle and became the chairperson. She was transferred to Lincoln Heights Secondary School, which is still one of the uh, high schools in Newcastle and in 1985 she had a fashion show in Newcastle wow. where she showcased the learners achievements and she raised funds for the school. Mrs. Ayer left Newcastle and was transferred to Phoenix Secondary in 1986 where she taught home economics from grade 6 to 12. Um, in 1991, and this was the prolific year mm -hmm. when volume 1 of Easy to Cook was released. In 1994, Mrs. Ayer won the Mardi Gras cookery competition. Wow. And she was then also the chairperson of the La Mercy Village Body Corporate. Mm -hmm. In 1995, Auntie Kanti was promoted to Evanford Secondary as the skills head of department. But in 1997, took a severance package and allowed her to do catering at home. Well, wonderful, wonderful credentials there and we're feeling so privileged and lucky to have Mrs. Uh, Ayer in the studio uh, with us. So a very, very good morning to you, Ma. And thank you so much for joining us here in studio. Um, you know, I hope that uh, it is definitely going to be uh, benefiting the listeners having here today. Thank you. Good morning, Vijay Lakshmi. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for inviting me to this new it, channel for our Indians. Yes, absolutely. A wonderful. Mrs. Ayer, we've given a lot of your credentials, but we want to know who really is Mrs. Ayer. And, uh, you know, besides home economics, what were your hobbies? Do you have kids? Did they take an interest <laughs> in cooking? Okay, I'll tell you a little about myself. Uh, the... The idea of writing this book was conceived way back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I used to write recipes while I was teaching. And I had a class of uh, typing students. So in the old days, we used to have our students right up to the last day. Uh, at present time, as soon as the exams are over, children are allowed to stay at home. But in the past, we had to, they had to come to school mm. till the very last day. Yes. So in order to keep them occupied while I was busy with my schedules, etc., I used to quickly write a recipe and, you know, make the children interested in what I was doing. I used to give it to them to type. Mm -hmm. And uh, hence, I um, gave credit to them. Indian book. Although uh, I had to retype 
uh, you know, now we have computers, but at that point in time, it was typing with the typewriter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I used to do this uh, at the end of the year and the beginning of the year and shelve it because I was a mother of two children mm -hmm. and I was an educator at that stage. So I found very little time you know, to concentrate on the book itself. Mm. And uh, funny enough, we think that we have ample time, but time seems to just slip by. And uh, it's actually due to my mother's persistence mm -hmm. that I took leave from school and I dedicated it to completing this book. Fantastic. So tell us, ma'am, um, you know, where did your love for cooking come from? Was home economics always your choice of a subject to teach or uh, did it come uh, a little later uh, or was it always home economics for you? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> uh, when I was in school, we had to do the big six. Mm. You know, we had no option, as you mentioned earlier, that in 1966 I matriculated. We just did mm. English, uh, Latin, Mm. Biology, geography, history, and maths. Uh -huh. Those were the six, and we had no option. Mm. Uh, when I was in Standard 8, they built a uh, domestic science center at St. Oswald's. I schooled mm -hmm. at St. Oswald's yes, and became a teacher there. And uh, so I didn't do the subject. But when I matriculated, the course that I did was offered to the Indians for the first time mm -hmm. a year prior to my matriculating. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a challenge for me because with no knowledge of home economics, I embarked on taking this as a subject. Mm -hmm. But I don't regret anything because I think I wouldn't be the person that I am. And uh, it was remarkable. I studied at Emal Sultan. Now it's the name is changed. And uh, we had uh, white lecturers. They did give us a lot of help, but we were also left to our own device. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, observing my mother cooking and uh, you know, it while to develop more. Uh, while we were children, we used to play house game and. Mm -hmm. There was a group of uh, friends. We sort of cooked. <laughs> we liked cooking in the house our house little games. pots. Yes, yes, yes that you was know. fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just telling my grandchildren. Mm. And uh, I suppose that was inbred. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went to college, it was mainly Western food mm -hmm. because we were at an institution that was run by white people, whites yes. during the apartheid period. Mm -hmm. we, I didn't even have a single Indian lecturer. Mm. But uh, we worked for four hours on cookery. Uh, that's the practical aspect. And then we had to do the theory, just as many hours. And the same thing with all the subjects that I did, dressmaking, upholstery, and mm -hmm. home management, and so on. So it was an all-encompassing uh, course Wonderful. Mm. Ma'am, do you think that, you know, our education system now, I do not think that home economics is part of it. Do you think that our community, our society is being deprived like they're on the back leg because this particular subject is, is, is not being taught? Definitely. Mm. Because for the number of years that it was, uh, you know, taught at school, I think a lot of girls benefited from mm. it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our life re revolves around home economics, basically. Yes. Everything that we do, I always told the children. Food and housekeeping. Housekeeping, yes. because no matter whether you become a doctor, a professor, lawyer, mm. you have to cook, mm. you have to sew, you have to run a home. So, you know, it's strange that while I was teaching, uh, the I would say that the more intelligent children decided that they, you know, home economics wasn't a good them. enough subject for them. <laughs> they chose geography, mm. history, science, uh, science yeah. and so on. But uh, I think some of them may be regretting. Mm. 
-hmm. But I did teach a lot of very, very intelligent girls. And uh, I must say that I was uh, very, very satisfied with the results. I, I was thrown into the deep end mm -hmm. in my first year teaching metrics. Sure. And uh, I taught metrics right up to the end of my teaching career. Mm -hmm. And I can be proud to say that I didn't have a single failure all the years. Wonderful, man. So that's, I did something right. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely amazing. It's strange, you know, they, they, they say you talk about science subjects, but home economics is a science. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it's surprising uh, that people don't seem to understand mm -hmm. that. It's applied science. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. Yes, we're in studio with Mrs. Kanti Iyer, and she is a home economics specialist and, and a writer uh, of two wonderful cookbooks. So tell us, Mrs. Iyer, where did your inspiration come from? I know you spoke about your mum, but uh, for, for yourself, I'm sure she was an inspiration, but from where else? Uh, I think... You know, you're inspired by several people. Mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of entertaining and uh, experimental cookery using my Eastern and Western knowledge, mm -hmm. combining, uh, you know, uh, producing some fusion recipes. And um, my brothers actually loved my food. And uh, they suggested initially why don't I write a good book? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that planted the seed. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, I started, as I said, writing recipes because mm. there was no South Indian, mm. South African cookbook. Correct, yeah. So this was basically the first South African, South Indian cookbook and maybe the second book on the market. Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, you know... As you know, it's already 31 years. Yes, in which year was, uh, was it first uh, launched? I published it in 1991 mm -hmm. and uh, I did direct marketing. So I didn't make a big uh, sort of uh, launch at that stage because I was planning to do my second book mm -hmm. and... Uh, I thought I'd launch both the books, and that's exactly what I did. But I didn't expect it to take 12 years to do the <laughs> second one because I, uh, Ravanya didn't mention that I also opened a restaurant. Oh, excellent. Yeah, once I took my severance package, yes. I did a bit of catering for the one year. Yes. And thereafter, I purchased a restaurant, and I ran a restaurant for a year. Wonderful. And how did that go? It went off very, very well, mm -hmm. Uh there's quite a few recipes in volume two mm -hmm. from my restaurant experiments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So, so a lot of these recipes are from the yours, basically yours. You've yes, written them. It's, you uh, taken it's them passed somewhere. down from my mom. Mm -hmm. And I used my uh, e uh, Western knowledge mm -hmm. and I created or uh, devised new recipes because I basically compiled mm -hmm. these recipes and then I produced these two books. What's the difference from the first book and uh, in comparison to the second book? Did you now add on first something? The book, uh, you know, I did all the basic things like the curries and the biryanis. And I think for that reason, people are still uh, purchasing that book, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, the younger ones are purchasing both the books mm -hmm. at the same time. But uh, the um, first book is quite simple, but there's lots of little tricks and uh, recipes that have a twist. Mm -hmm. So I think for that... Your reason, own flavor, you it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I used to buy different types of sauces and whatever was in season, the herbs. So it's not like straightforward mm -hmm. mutton curry, chicken curry, and fish curry, and so on. But lots of Western foods mm -hmm. with an Eastern flavor. Sounds so, great. Yeah. What tips could you give to our listeners out there um, for cooking? You know, I think it would be a good idea coming from you with all your experience and being an author of two books. What? you know I because I did direct marketing I've come into contact with several people mm -hmm. and uh, 
the younger ones are very, very appreciative because they've been learning how to cook. The book is absolutely easy, as the name says, easy to cook Indian recipes. Mm -hmm. But I used to get some comments that they tried recipes and uh, when it didn't come out right, they threw mm. it into the bin and started all over again. I feel, especially now with our economic climate, mm -hmm. you cannot afford to waste ingredients. You can rather convert whatever mistake, especially with the sweetmeats. I've heard lots of comments where people said, oh, you know, it did not from my book mm -hmm. because mine, I can guarantee you, it's flop proof. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, they've been saying that they don't want to attempt making gulab jam or barfi or chana mm -hmm. muggage mm -hmm. because it didn't turn out right. But you have to, especially like when you're baking, when you're uh, making sweetmeats, you be, have to have specific uh, quantities for mm. these ingredients. Mm -hmm. You can't like take a chance and say, put a bit of this and a bit of that. You You've know, got to be, have proper measures. Pre yeah. And um, the uh, curries, I think people can use their discretion and adjust accordingly because whether it's my book or any recipe book, and now especially there's so many recipes on the market uh, recipe books, mm -hmm. as well as you can download from the internet yes, and exactly. so on. Yeah. You cannot blame the author because uh, the type of masala that you use, the uh, amount of oil that you use, uh, the type of chilies that you will add to your recipe. You know, the recipe says chilies. <laughs> and sometimes certain chilies are very, very pungent mm. and others are mild. Mm. So, you, you know, have to use your sense. You have to use common sense. Because there. this will impact the taste of the food. That's it. And, mm. uh, you know, I've spoken to some men and they said, oh, they added um, too much of water. If you look at those recipe books, because it was written in 1993, mm. I used uh, mutton, mm -hmm. you know, instead of lamb. Okay, now I okay. use lamb. Now, lamb cooks much faster than mutton, mutton. Mm -hmm. and uh, although mutton is tastier. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to add water, then some people like it with extra gravy. Some people like it dryish. Mm. So you use your discretion. Correct. Although in my recipes, I've given specific quantities mm -hmm. uh, because it took me so long to compiled this, mm -hmm. I gave it to several friends, relatives to test out the recipes. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm so confident to say that it's flop proof and Ravanya <laughs> is here to guarantee that. <laughs> I see in your book you've got nice uh, like uh, for instance the herb chutney, you wrote uh, kanji kire yes, and braised Tamil okra names. you wrote yes. vendeka and uh, you know ginger pachadi and uh, lots of other things, nuts, uh, tovel yes. that's really nice, it gives yeah, it uh, that South Indian flavour. Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, this was the first South mm. uh, African South Indian book mm -hmm. and uh, I said why not use our Tamil name. Some were difficult for pronunciation. So but it's a good way to learn. Uh, uh, language. I, uh, you know, like the crab curry and so on. So I didn't want to put Nanda Kolumbu <laughs> and so on. <laughs> I said, crab because, curry. you know, initially when I wrote this book, I had a different target market. Mm -hmm. But I was pleasantly surprised that so many Indians, thousands around the world. My book is on the uh, on Amazon.com. Fantastic. So uh, it's uh, you know as an e-book they purchase it, mm -hmm. and uh, from our observation, it's purchased in India, the UK, Canada, wow. Germany, yes, uh, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. So. That's Wonderful, man. Yeah. I, I think they're also buying the book because of your picture. Look here, she's so beautifully <laughs> looked. A very young uh, Kanti Ayer, my goodness. You always had a very good fashion sense, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, and ma'am, uh, in Durban, because, you know, we are here, where can yes. people get uh, copies of this book? Oh, within South Africa. 
It used to be available in all the spice shops, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, there's a flood of recipe books, so mm-hmm. most of them have discontinued selling them. Mm-hmm. But so. uh, what we do now is we courier the books to your home. You get it at your door, and uh, my son, who's the uh, marketing director, mm-hmm. he normally uh, contact. I mean, you contact him mm-hmm. on email. It's on my uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm. The details and um, the books are dispatched. If you're in Johannesburg, you get it the very next day. Mm-hmm. So we've been sending it around nationally, any part of South Africa. Some places it takes longer because I don't think the courier service goes on a daily basis. But mm-hmm. I know for a fact that Johannesburg gets it the very next day. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, a good thing. Okay. And then, of course, uh, later on, because there's not very many hard copies. Mm. And my, um, unfortunately, my printer, he, uh, they, due to COVID, they actually closed down the printing press. Mm. They have produced books that I envisaged. And, uh, you know, because I'm also the publisher of this book. So okay. I feel proud that I, every aspect of that book was done by me. It's your stamp is there. And my children. (laughs) Yeah, I must say that. Well, I think it's an excellent uh, family uh, endeavor. But uh, right now, we're going to ask Ravanya to give us this really, really nice recipe of a uh, brinjal pachadi. Please go again ahead, Ravanya. So please, listeners, dear friends of Southside FM, take out your pens or even record this recipe because I'm sure you are going to want to try it out. Good morning, listeners. I am not a fan mm. of brinjal, <laughs> but I have tasted this um, made by Kanti Aya. Mm-hmm. And since then, it has been one of my favorites. It is such a delightful flavor. Mm-hmm. It's an accompaniment to your, your curry and your rice or your biryani, and it's absolutely delicious. So this is why I particularly like chose that. this one. Okay, okay yeah. so I hope you guys have your pins. It's called brinjal pachiri. Your ingredients, two large brinjols, four green chilies, 37 and a half mLs of vinegar, four mLs of salt, one large onion, half a bunch of coriander or dhania leaves, 15 mLs of sugar, and one large ripe tomato. Mm-hmm. The method... Bake the brinjols in their jackets at 180 degrees Celsius until soft and tender. Remove the skin and mash with a fork or put into a liquidizer for a few seconds. Add the chopped onion, chili, tomatoes and coriander leaves. Add the vinegar, sugar and salt and mix well. Like I said, this is an absolutely delightful accompaniment with your biryani, your roast or your curry. Enjoy. Oh, that sounds uh, really, really yum. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm, I'm sure I'm actually going to try that uh, recipe. Um, ma'am, I was going to ask you, what is your favorite uh, dish to prepare? What do you like to prepare? Uh, to tell you the fact, if I can tell you a special recipe, then I'm not mm-hmm. the author of this book. <laughs> 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 because I think all the recipes are special. Special. I have, uh, you know, a variety of dishes from mm-hmm. fish, meat, chicken. So I can't like pick one specific recipe. Mm-hmm. and tell you that is my special and I cook it all the time. Mm-hmm. When I decide to cook, I think of what ingredient I have in my fridge. And then you just get creative. And uh, <laughs> I prepare that. <laughs> okay, uh, Mrs. Ayer, have you traveled much? Have you be exposed yourself to other types of cuisine? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I traveled quite a bit. I was fortunate, I think. <laughs> I started traveling from 1970. Wow. Right up to uh, 2017, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, with COVID or 2018. Mm -hmm. So I've seen most of the world, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I would say. Have you used some of the ideas to influence your preparations? uh, 
I did a lot of sea travel, so I used to look at the presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, the emphasis now, I don't think cooking has changed, mm -hmm. but it's the way we plate our food. Mm -hmm. It's the garnishing, because at the moment, you know, food has become fashionable. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are emphasizing the plating. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, served, yeah. yeah, it's with lots of flowers. Mm -hmm. and garnishes, you know, cucumber curls and so on. Yes, quite often people say you eat through the eyes. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, uh, it's, got you know, it's called fine dining. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, as Indians, we always prepared our meals. We served them in bowls and mm, people have themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see that happening amongst any nationality now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They keep, know, they're keeping so, it simple. Yeah. Talking about presentation, you know, in the book, I noticed the pictures are absolutely beautiful. And, uh, you know, it's very, very appealing. And you were saying something to me about the pictures. Just tell our listeners what you did, for, <laughs> especially for your first volume. Yeah, well, first and second, we mm. uh, had to prepare all the dishes on the one day, <laughs> the meals. Oh, my goodness. So there were like 40 things that had to be prepared because wow. I got a photographer to come home. Mm -hmm. Red Stewart did my volume one and mm -hmm. volume two was um, uh, George Tadden. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must know the expense of calling them on a regular basis mm -hmm. would have escalated. So we decided, and I must, uh, you know, uh, thank my relatives, especially my two sisters-in-law, mm -hmm. one is late now, mm -hmm. and uh, my friends, we all got together and we prepared dish dishes. 40 dishes. And yeah, the cakes and the biscuits, I wow. could do Manage. that a mm -hmm. day or two before. Mm -hmm. But all the fresh food had to be prepared on that day. Mm -hmm. And I did the styling. Oh, I did excellent. prepare certain garnishes at night, mm -hmm. uh, the night before. And uh, we styled the dishes, put it out. The photographer took them. Mm. And then we had a lovely meal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we all would have wanted to have been there, ma'am, to, to taste all this delightful yeah. food. No, that's uh, excellent. So food has become very trendy now, as you were saying. So what's your view on the different mixes of flavor and cuisine? Uh, do you indulge in, in a type of any fusion cooking or do you prefer to keep them as is separate? Uh, volume one is basically separate, mm -hmm. but volume two, I've used a lot of fusion mm -hmm. uh, uh, Technique. dish, uh, techniques mm -hmm. because, as I mentioned, you know, a bit in volume uh, one, but mm -hmm. uh, in volume two, I've got lots of Western combinations, you mm -hmm. know, because when I studied, the main seasoning was pepper and salt. Yeah. But now you'll notice that people are talking about chilies and cumin and curcumin, yes. you know, in Western <laughs> recipes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's basically an Indian thing. <laughs> but we didn't take credit for it, you know. Oh. So uh, I, I use a lot of herbs. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the past, I don't think... Indians really used a lot of the Italian herbs and mm -hmm. the mixed herbs mm -hmm. and, you it know, basil mean, and yes. marjoram and so on. Now, I experimented with that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be giving out an email address um, for our Southside family. And uh, that is... Uh, Taven. Uh, T-H-A-V-E-N... I Y E R 19. That's Tavian Ayer at gmail.com. And the number to call is 082 451 0289. So uh, you can contact him and uh, maybe place your order for this uh, really, really delightful book. It's, you know, Ma'am was the publisher herself and she's taken so many. Um, uh, uh, sacrifices and so many challenges she's had to face to make this book come alive and it truly does come alive. I'm going to ask Ravanya to give us another recipe quickly. So Vijay Akka, before I give you the recipe, I'm mm. going to share uh, something that's very special about Volume 1 mm. and it is something that I discovered early in my, when I was pretty young, mm. 
um, four pages four, five, and six is called the beginner of in uh, the beginner's guide to Indian cooking, mm-hmm. and what it has it has the English terms mm-hmm. and the Indian terms. So if you are looking, for example, for hing, yeah, if you go into a store, you you. I like and the shopkeeper would look at you like so the book has the key to it so it says asafatada is hing mm-hmm. and on page 6 it has the uh, metric working measurements so when you look at a recipe and it says 30 grams this this actually tells you that like 1 ml is is a quarter teaspoon and this i cannot tell you how helpful this is mm. uh, even if you're looking at other recipe books or you always have this as a cross reference an index that's excellent well the tamil word for hing is a perangai <laughs> okay i learned something <laughs> yes yes so go ahead and give us this uh, recipe for so kanti aya actually suggested this recipe in particular um and she said it's a different kind of uh meal it's delicious and it's mm. also uh something that you can have you you can have with uh, as a side or as a starter mm-hmm. okay and this is called lamb rolls mm-hmm. so it's your ingredients 1 kg lamb leg cut into very thin slices 10 ml of crushed fresh red chilies 5 ml of coriander or dhania powder half a ml of clove powder 10 ml of crushed ginger and garlic a quarter bunch of coriander leaves 120 ml of cake flour bread crumbs blended with mixed herbs one large onion 5 ml of cumin powder 5 ml of fennel powder half a ml of cinnamon powder 5 mm-hmm. ml of salt 50 ml of peanut butter two beaten eggs and oil for shallow frying mm-hmm. your method beat each slice of lamb with a mallet to flatten wash and pat dry liquidize all ingredients together and spread both spread on both sides of the meat leave in a, in a refrigerator for 1 or 2 hours to marinate roll each piece of lamb like you would a swiss roll with the marinade and paste it in between each fillet secure with the toothpick or with a piece of string Lo- roll in flour and dip in beaten egg and then into the bread crumbs fry in shallow oil until the lamb is tender and golden brown on all sides remove the toothpick before serving this can be served with naan chutney salads and pickles this sounds so delicious mm-hmm. Well, of course, Mrs. Ayer's uh, recipes are r- really, really sounding uh, great, ma'am. It's been so wonderful having you with us on uh, radio. Thank you so much for coming through and uh, sharing your your recipes, and thank you for those beautiful books that you've brought through. But I'm also very interested in this n- naming book. Let us talk very quickly about that because we're going to go into news soon. Tell us a little bit about that, uh, the naming book. How did that come up? This came about when. my last grandchild was born mm-hmm. my daughter-in-law spent two weeks uh, looking at uh, the um, internet trying to find a name because as you know mm. that the priest looks at the almanac and he gives us correct the, to um, either to uh, uh, the sound or the um, letters the letter, that yes. you could decide on a name mm. So when I looked around and I found that she was taking so long to choose a name it mm-hmm. gave me the idea that's how okay. <laughs> it I conceived the idea okay. and I just sat and I I said give me a good name because you know when I was teaching children changed their names mm-hmm. when they were writing their metric exams <laughs> so that they had a new name Okay. In the certificate. <laughs> and I said I think parents need to think take that into consideration and give their child a good name that they can keep because a name is our identity. Correct. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, that's another a great innovation of yours <laughs> and uh, I hope that uh, also will be available um, on on the net. No, actually I'm giving this, you know, when people order both my books, mm-hmm. I actually give this away as a A no. gift. gift yeah. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful gift. We put it into the uh, packaging, and we give it to them so that because you know I don't have meanings of the names, mm-hmm. 
I didn't like that idea because as an author of this book, if I just decided that this is the meaning and that is the meaning for a certain name, mm -hmm. it's like lying to the people. Mm -hmm. You know, in the old days, we had deities. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, it had some significance. Mm -hmm. But now, if mm -hmm. you are going to give an, a meaning, it's pointless because it's the author's decision to say this is what the child... And you're yeah. lying to the public, yeah. I think, because I actually combined names mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know. You made it sound nice. Sound, it sounds sounded sweet. nice. Yes, and, yes. you know, I think n most of the modern parents are using their names, combining. Everybody is creating names now, you know. They're not going by the book. Mm -hmm. I know uh, what you're saying because, uh, you know, my name is Vijay Lakshmi. But I went, when I went to India to study, my guru had a look at the almanac and the nakshatram and everything. He says, no, this is a wrong letter. They started your name. It should be K. So he gave me another name, uh, K, well, which I'm very proud to say on air today. It's Kanyakumari. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I do prayers and all of that, we have to call the, take that, that particular name. Anyway, yeah. so, so, so delightful to have you in studio. Thank you so much for for being here with us, Mrs. Iyer, and for enlightening our listeners on uh, your two beautiful books on a South Indian, a South African uh, cooking, which is a site slightly different to uh, a, a proper, particularly South Indian cooking. You say South Indian, South African cooking. And I think that's what's special about your book. It's called Easy to Cook. And yes, you can go um, uh, and email uh, Tavin Iyer at 19 at gmail.com and also get a free copy of your, your names book. All the very best to you. Thank you also to Ravani, uh, Ravania for bringing Mrs. Uh, Iyer through to us, for introducing her to us. And uh, God bless you, ma'am. And also, of course, here at Southside FM, we also need your blessings for our station to prosper. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. And I'm sure you will grow from strength to strength. Thank you, Ma. Lots of Thank love you. to you.